We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. Despite what Katie said in his speech, going to the moon was not just out of wonder or exploration, but of competition with the Soviet Union and Cold War rivalry. Despite being started out of this bitter competition and the many tragedies and doubts the Apollo missions faced, they would prove to be more than worth it, as they would lead to giant leaps in technology, science, medicine, communication, they would inspire the world. The missions got off to a shaky start as public approval was very low. Many people believe the money spent on the space program was better used elsewhere as adjusted for inflation. The missions costed over $163 billion. Even President Kennedy admitted he was more interested in political power from space and beating the Soviets in actual exploration. However, this was not all true at the time, as the money spent on Apollo was minuscule compared to the nation's budget at the time. Apollo astronauts Roger Chaffee, Edward White, and Gus Grissom lose their lives in a tragic flash fire aboard their grounded space capsule. The tragedy occurred during a simulated countdown for the first flight of the Apollo program, whose goal is to put a man on the moon by 1970. Grissom and White were veterans of space flight. Chaffee, a rookie. The tragic fire in Apollo 1 stunned the nation and was a major setback for NASA, and only hurt public approval of the Apollo missions more, as not three brave men's lives have been lost. This, however, could have been avoided as the astronauts, Roger Chaffee, Gus Grissom, and Ed White, voiced their concern for the safety of the mission, and even made this parody photo of their crew portrait. It's hard to imagine what it was like to look back at that picture for the people behind the mission after the tragic fire. We asked NASA astronaut Nicole Mann of what she thinks the risks of going to space are. Here's what she said. I get that question often, and I don't feel, you know, obviously going to space is a risky business, but, uh, you know, everything that we do is a very calculated risk. And, you know, I have a lot of confidence in NASA and our commercial partners and the team that they're building a vehicle that's going to keep me safe when I go to space. And so there's a lot of testing that's done and there's a lot of, you know, verification that everything is going to work well and properly and before we go to space. And then there's a lot of reliability and re redundancy built into the system so that if something should go wrong while we're in space, that we still have the capability to keep ourselves safe and get us home safely. Um, in fact, today I was out in El Segundo uh, in California. My spacecraft is out there now and it's going through some thermal vacuum testing. So that's in this huge chamber. They uh, draw all the air down, so they put it in a vacuum and then they simulate the same temperature profiles that the spacecraft will see in space. Then they power it up and then run all the systems to check to to see that everything's functioning as it should. And, you know, they find, you know, a bunch of little things that are, that are wrong with it and they're going to fix all that before we fly. So, um, so I definitely think that they are calculated risks and I don't feel that, um, you know, it's necessarily dangerous um, in that sense. Five, four, we have ignition. All engines are running. We have liftoff. We have liftoff at 7 a. Apollo 4 would be the first flight for NASA since Apollo 1. This would test the Saturn V rocket for the first time. The Saturn V rocket would be used to take a man to the moon in Apollo 11. It would without any hitches, and while it was an unmanned mission, it was the first for a long line of successes for the United States and NASA. Apollo 5 would be the first test of the lunar module and would also be another success for NASA. The main goal of this was to test the detachment of the module and how it would operate in space for the moon landing. Manned missions began with Apollo 7, the first space flight mission to attempt to send a crew into space since Apollo 1. Emotions and fears ran high, especially with the captain, Wally Shira, who was good friends and neighbors with Gus Grissom, one of the astronauts who passed aboard Apollo 1. The crew would repeatedly talk back to command and argue over what should be done with the TV camera in the shuttle and re-entry, making this the close thing to moon in space. This led to the crew being rejected to future missions and the captain would leave NASA soon after. However, the mission was a success as it would achieve all of its goals despite the tension. This was followed by Apollo 8, the first manned spaceflight to leave low Earth orbit, reach the moon, orbit the moon, and return back to Earth. During this mission, this iconic photo was taken. It was nicknamed Earthrise. This, however, was not enough to sway public opinion. In fact,
fact, the support to cut the program actually went up by 40% in 1969 after Apollo 8. The side that's always exposed to the Earth. We were like three school kids looking into a candy store window. Our noses were pressed against the glass. We forgot the flight plan. Then, something happens that no one has predicted. And it turns out to be an even more amazing sight. When I looked up and saw the Earth coming up on this very stark, beat-up lunar horizon, an Earth that was the only color that we could see, uh, a very fragile looking earth, a very delicate looking earth, I was immediately almost overcome with the thought, you know, here we came all this way to the moon and yet the most significant thing we're seeing is our own home planet, the earth. Though their mission was to photo... Okay, Dave, come on out. Okay. I'm gonna let the camera run here. But Dave, come on out wherever you are. Stand by, let me... Uh... Put away my little push button. Yeah, we're all taking pictures of everybody taking pictures. Yeah, you want to retrieve the sample? Apollo 9 astronauts would spend 10 days in low Earth orbit testing navigation systems, LM engines, backpack life support systems, and docking maneuvers for Apollo 11. Apollo 10 would go to the moon and do everything Apollo 11 would do short of landing on it. Apollo 10 would nearly crash into the moon after the astronauts accidentally duplicated the flight plan into the computer causing it to malfunction. It was later determined that the lander had come within two seconds of crashing into the lunar surface before Stafford and Cernan regained control. Despite the few unnerving seconds, Apollo 10 had cleared a pathway almost down to the lunar surface. Snoopy's mission was over. The next LEM to fly was reserved for Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. It would be called the Eagle. On July 16, 1969, at 9.32 a.m., the Eagle would lift off with three astronauts aboard. Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. On July 20, 1969, at 8.17 p.m., Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin would become the first two people to ever step foot on the moon. And had the mission failed and the astronauts were stuck on the moon, Richard Nixon would have read a speech that partially states, Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery, but they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. These two men are laying down their lives in mankind's most noble goal, the search for truth and understanding. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. Houston, Columbia, on I gate, over. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. They're setting up the flag now. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. Another question we asked NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is how have the Apollo missions affected NASA today and in future missions? Here's what she said. Yeah, um, you know, I think, I'm sure you've done your research and, and you know that they were really blazing the trail for a lot of, of what we're able to do today. We learned so much from Apollo and, you know, from you know, technology perspective, but also just from, you know, what, what we can do as, as people, as humans, if we have the resources and we have the inspiration to do something incredible. And I think you can apply that to many different things, uh, you know, whether it be space exploration or whether it be, uh, you know, taking care of our home planet um, or anything. So